What's up, dudes? Uh, welcome back to another excellent, excellent, amazing, awesome, beautiful video made by the great me. Now, considering I know 99.9% of y'all, I just say it, took a shower, uh, sweat my hair, sweat, sweat, see. Um, who cares though? Because this is a video. Now, this video is iconic, okay? Because it's marking. The start of something new. That's a it, yeah. I'm I'm just, I'm just be quiet, right? What that is is a, a series. That series is a is about one of my favorite topics, history. And we're starting we're starting way back in the day, like way back, like not like like the Revolutionary War way back. We're talking we're talking forever back, like more than two thousand BC back. All right, to one of the most famous civilizations, um, and arguably the start, arguably considered the start of civilization, right? And that's Mesopotamia, ancient Mesopotamia. Now, not much is known about a lot of the earlier ancient Mesopotamian societies that developed, but we do know that they existed and that the writing system has existed for very long, right? But things start to really become known um, and interesting in the region. In my opinion, around 4,000 years ago, around um, 2000 BC, right? Now, um, one of those reasons, if you went to middle school, sixth grade, Akkadians long ago conquered Sumer to control, Sargon led his armies, and the chariots they rolled, by the Euphrates River, right? Um, that happened around this time. It happened a little before, 4,000 years ago. But, um, full disclaimer, by the way, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I do. I know a little bit, and I think it's interesting, so I want to talk about it, what I know about it. But, uh, don't trust me all the way. Um, but what I do know, I know because of two sources. British Museum, uh, more particularly... Um, British Assyriologist Irving Finkel, great dude, at the British Museum. And then we have uh, Matt Baker and John Andrews of Useful Charts, which I actually bought, like, a book of their charts. Very cool. Or I didn't buy it. I got it for Christmas. But I got it. Very cool. Very fun. Exciting. I love it. And... If you're interested in history like I am, you should definitely check it out. But, uh, anyways, let me get started on actually talking about things more than just Sargon and his chariots. Anyways, yeah, uh, introduction. Just pretend there's a paper and it says introduction, okay? Uh, and the introduction, right, is Assyriology. We gotta talk about Assyriology. Now, I said Irving Finkel was part of my research um, for this video, which, I mean, I didn't actually research the video, I've done prior research, and I'm using that research for the video, um, but, Irving Finkel is an Assyriologist, you know, unless you're a big history nerd like myself, you're like, what in the donkey is an Assyriologist? An Assyriologist is a person, it's like a historian, uh, kind of, but they, what they do is focus entirely on Assyrian history, especially ancient Assyria. Uh, and if you're wondering, what's Assyria? Mesopotamia, right? Civilizations like the, um, Sumeria, the, uh, Babylonian civilization, right? Um, and those guys, all of them, right? That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying Assyria. Um, and Irving Fingal, studies that stuff, and this is what this video is going to be about, it's going to be about Assyria, um, so, that's why Irving Finkel has necessary knowledge, right, but, uh, let's actually get into the, the first part of this, which, uh, we're going to have a fake paper, right, uh, that's just my hands, I'm just gonna say pretend that this is something, we're gonna call this segment, um, we're gonna call it, give me a second, give me, give me, give me one second, right, one second, one second, uh, we're gonna call it, what am I thinking here? Uh, just 
start of agriculture. That's what we're calling it. We're talking about agriculture, guys. Now, uh, this stuff I learned in my school. Uh, but agriculture started in this area, um, which is very surprising because uh, this area, if you look at it nowadays, um, the agriculture in this area developed in like Iraq and Syria. There's no way you can farm in Iraq and Syria, though, uh, if you look at it. And it's just like, wait, how, how did you farm here? What? Why would you? What? Right? Because you can't. There's no ability to farm. And that's because uh, of desert desertification caused by uh, overcropping the fields um, for like a long time. Because uh, it's like kind of the only way the civilization existed because uh, by farming and farming and farming and farming for centuries. Uh, and... Well, their civilization existed for a long time. It wasn't all under one group. Up until uh, Sargon, there wasn't much of a large centralized empire. Um, but, yeah, he definitely united the area of Sumer, which is another name for, the, for Assyria, right? Now, anyways, agriculture started over here because of um, specific grain crops. That they were able to grow um which is the main reason for any agriculture in fact um like a lot of this information i'm getting about getting this from my school education but um it's uh, very interesting right um that civilization doesn't really start unless you have grain crops for example in africa early civilizations in western africa which also kind of got oofed by desertification um they had guess what you're mind blown, ready? Grain crops, they had sorghum to be more specific. Um, which, grain berry, grain berry, healthy cereal for your family. You know, uh, Otic sorghum or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's basically what they had. They ate that stuff like crazy. Um, the Sumerians were similar, though they did not have sorghum. Um, but anyways, to continue, in earlier civilizations, agriculture was developed and uh, had heavy and quite intricate methods of using irrigation, right? Uh, like Egypt is quite well known for its multiple irrigation channels off of the Nile. And in Sumeria, this is the case as well. Um, being nestled between two rivers, uh, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, meant that that was likely to happen. But another way that their uh, crops and their fields were um, able to be farmed on using water was floods. And floods were very common in the area. In fact, um, in religion, we're told the story of Noah's Ark. Uh, at least in Christianity, right? And uh, in Christianity, there's a massive flood because God is angry at humans. So he takes, like, the few good ones and two of each animal. On, um, He's like, go on this boat that Noah, the good human, is going to build, right? And your whole family, Noah, they can come with you. And y'all can restart humanity using that, right? Uh, which means we're all Jews. So like ethnically obviously only like 14 million people in the whole world religiously are Jews but ethnically we are all Jewish right so interesting fact tidbit according to Christianity um, and Judaism right a little um, ethnocentric there but who cares anyways the flood story is also talked about in other religions like that of the Sumerians, um, and their ancient religion was quite interesting, and they definitely talked about, um, this whole flood story, and they had multiple gods that are polytheistic compared to, like, Christianity. I don't bring up religion a lot, by the way, guys, especially in these earlier episodes, but, like, Christianity being monotheistic, um, but, um, the Sumerian religion, was polytheistic, which is in contrast to Christianity being monotheistic. Mono is um, the Greek word for one. Poly, 
Uh, it's the Greek word for many. So many gods versus one god. Um, anyways, the polytheists of Sumeria began developing larger um, civilizations around the time of Sargon. Sargon led his armies and their chariots. They rolled by the Euphrates River um, and the Tigris. Don't forget about the Tigris, right? But um, after that, there was a massive worldwide, worldwide hundred-year drought. Um, and this affected civilization horribly in, like, Arabia and Northern Africa. Um, for example, the Mycenaeans um, or other early Greek civilizations, not necessarily Mycenaeans, died, disappeared. Um, I guess the thing is the Minoans disappeared, didn't exist. Now, they had other issues, but part of their issue was a big climate issue, right? Other um, issues um, were uh, the collapse of any Phoenician civilization in the Levant, which is uh, parts of Syria, um, and then it's Israel or Palestine, or both, actually. Um, the region, Palestine and the West Bank, Gaza Strip as well, country Israel, and um, Lebanon, which is where the Phoenicians are actually from. So the Phoenicians were like, hey, a uh, drought, and they left. And they went to Tunisia to found Carthage, which is very fun. But, like I said, this video is about Sumeria more so. But yeah. The point is, their civilization started with agriculture. Now we are at stage two, paper, and it says something. Like, the, the paper says something. Paper. Cool. That paper right there that says something, uh, what it says, I'm going to show you again. Once I've thought of it, I have to think of things for right now. Cuneiform and early writings. They form in early writings of the Sumerian and Babylonians. All right. Anyways, cuneiform is the script that was used by them. And Assyriology is more than just history. It goes into the language and many other aspects of uh, culture at the time for these people, uh, which is very interesting to me and it's very fun. That's why I'm talking about it, right? This is a history lesson, but it's also going to tell you a little bit about the culture, right? You can't just learn about the wars and such that happened for the Romans, right? You have to learn about what led to these wars culturally, what cultural differences um, and cultural aspects um, did the Romans have that maybe made them good at war or whatever, right? And that's the same thing with the seriology. It looks into that. Um, so anyways, uh, cuneiform was the script they used and uh, the language spoken by the Sumerians, well, I'm not totally aware of this, is likely Semitic, considering that the majority of the languages in that area, Semitic, right? Uh, not too far away, you can find um, Indo-Aryan, or Indo-European, I should say, of the Indo-Aryan branch, actually, so I mean, I guess I'm not wrong, but I'm not totally right either, I, I learned the broader term, right? But you can find those languages. Uh, but the area that we're talking about specifically, Sumeria, or Sumer, sorry, or Syria, they spoke a Semitic language. It is definitely by far extinct by though. Uh, you want to know what it was called, guys? So you're going to mind blown, already. Sumerian. No way did they call the language spoken in Sumer and in the Sumerian Empire Sumerian. Like, why would they do that? That makes sense. But no, it was likely Semitic language. Um, and... You're like, what's a Semitic language? Uh, you're the history expert, the language expert. I have no clue what, what in the world you're talking about. Well, a Semitic language, I have examples. There's Hebrew, there's Arabic, uh, Amharic, or Ahamur, ah, Amharic, it's Amharic. Um, you have Maltese, and that's, that's basically it. I mean, there's like some smaller ones that nobody cares about, and there's the extinct ones, one of which we're talking about, Sumerian, right? But the Sumerian language was spoken across um, a wide range of land um, between and 
or on and between the uh, Tigris and Euphrates rivers and just outside of them where there's still air, re reasonably arable, right? Earlier civilizations, they built off the coast and at rivers. That was the most convenient way to build for them. And uh, that's how they did so. But um, anyways, around this, around 1600 BC, we see um, literature and um, other famous aspects of Sumerian culture popping up as in Hammurabi's Code, which is also talked about in the song that I was talking about, that I was seeing. Um, Akkadians long ago conquered Sumer to control Sargon led his armies and their chariots they rolled by the Euphrates River, right? That's the same as the song I'm talking about. They talk about Hammurabi's Code. You obeyed it. You followed it. If you broke Hammurabi's Code, you'd be saying, oh no, because they'd kill you. Um, but anyways, the main idea of Hammurabi's Code uh, is eye for an eye. Um, which means eye for an eye, uh, believe it or not, wow, crazy. In other words, if you kill someone, you get killed. Uh, and we don't see that necessarily in effect. Uh, not, not in all ways, uh, because that'd be kind of inhumane in a lot of cases, but we do see it. Like, for example, um, the death penalty is used uh, in a lot of the United States. Not all of it. Uh, some states have outlawed it. But it is used in a lot of them. And a lot of our, uh, land mass and population. <laughs> I don't even... I barely make sense, I know. Bear with me. But uh, it's definitely still used. So that's one effect of this Sumerian culture on modern society. Right? death penalty, capital punishment, right? But there is more interesting aspects to this. There's the Epic of Gilgamesh, written around these, this exact same time, slightly before, no, slightly after. Over, just around the time, okay, I, I misremember, but around the time of the of Hammurabi's Code, or the Code of Hammurabi. I could have made that work, I just didn't make it work, so... Not too good at what I'm doing, right? This makes no sense. It's kind of sad. But, uh, yes. Anyways, very fun. History. Who cares? Um, yes, but the Epic of Gilgamesh was a... St Epic of Gilgamesh was a story. It's like a long, drawn-out, confusing poem is what an epic is. Um, about a guy named Gilgamesh who was the descendant of the gods and was a king of Babylon. Right? Um, it was a pretty interesting story and... It involves some of the mythology of this culture, society, or whatever you want to call it, which I actually know very little of, so it's pretty sad, considering I'm making a video about the history and culture of the society, yet I know nothing about their religion, except that it was polytheistic, um, which is fun, and that the Ghostbusters movie featured some of it. I forget the names of the mythology persons from it, but it does feature them. Uh, but anyways, back to talking about it and not going off track and talking about Mythbusters. Not Mythbusters, Mythbusters, Ghostbusters. What am I saying? I all of my today. Uh, don't don't blame me. Okay, I've had a long day, but uh, yeah, Mythbusters. <laughs> but no, um, around this time, especially civilization in the area became very exciting and, and a lot of things were happening for example ziggurats um which were massive and i mean massive structures created um in these areas uh were built um one famous one being in ur and ziggurats were religious temples and administrative centers they were they were a lot of they served a lot of purposes almost like um basilicas in Roman his, all history, Roman life did as well, um, which in a future video I will likely talk about, um, because I, in, li in Latin, I literally learned this stuff for my language credit, which is very fun. Y'all should all do Latin. Everybody watching, do Latin. I recommend it. But 
the mythology and the culture of this civilization really started to develop around this time. Um, and it's all very interesting. Now, uh, like, that's really all I'd say. Do I know actually much about the actual history? No, I mo know mostly life and culture and language. I told you about uh, the Akkadians long ago, though. They conquered Sumer and they took control, though. I mean, okay, I'll tell you this, too. The Akkadians weren't in control at this time. They were talking about with all of the ziggurats and such and such. They weren't around at the time. Um, that was the Babylonian Empire. And at a later point in time, uh, when you probably wouldn't expect it, around 700 BC, I believe, there was the Neo-Babylonian Empire. I think it could have been um, more recent than 700 BC, which is also pretty surprising still, um, which was, hey, uh, guys, the Babylonian Empire doesn't exist anymore, but we're Chads, so let's create it again. And they are like, oh my gosh, you're a genius. So they, they did. Uh, but that's basically it, but I only have, I have one last thing to say. Uh, thank you, Irving Finkel, for this one. And it's called the Royal Game of Ur, a very fun board game that they had at the time that was found in guess where? Ur. What? That place with the big cigarette? Yeah, the place with the big cigarette. It's found in a graveyard, too, with Ur Cemetery, which is fun. Very fun, right? Um, but the Royal Game of Ur has you, you, right? There's dice. There's you and another player. The board is really weirdly shaped. It's like an hourglass almost. Right? What you have to do, you start over here. You have to go up, in, down, over, and off the board where it goes in. Right? And uh, this game, you play with the dice, you roll the dice. Uh, depending on what you get, that's how many places you can move. There's certain spots on the board, I think there's five of them where uh, you can't be killed. Your piece can be taken off if they land on that spot, but there's places on the board where that's not the case, uh, which is very interesting, very fun, right? But the goal is to get all, I believe, seven of your pieces off the board first. Uh, and it's a very fun game. I, at a point in time, when I did all my research, I just wanted it. I was like, hit that world game of her. Somebody world game of her. I'm not going to get a game of her, but uh, it was an interesting um, niche interest of mine. And y'all get to hear, and y'all got to hear about it today. So uh, thank you for probably leaving at the two minute mark when I was still rambling about what I was going to talk about and that I was creating a new series. Um, if you liked the video, guess what you can do? You can like it. No way. That's crazy, bro. Um, if you didn't like it, I mean,. You technically should dislike it. Uh, I would like to hear your opinion. Uh, I have no clue if comments are going to be disabled because YouTube just kind of does that sometimes, which I don't like, but it happens. Um, so if they are, don't comment because <laughs> you can't. Uh, but if they are, uh, if you have something nice to say, do it. If you have something constructive criticism that might help me in the future, so definitely do it. If you're just going to be a meanie poo poo poo, I can't stop you, but. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that. And uh, otherwise, that's basically it. Peace, bruvs.